Hi, it's Dave from VVAX Metrotech again. Uh, another video in our series of this one on fault locating. It's a lovely day here in late July in Canada. Uh, we're at a private service. We got a service to a building burned out. So we're going to look, we're going to use the A-frame to find that, uh, that damage. Come on up, let's have a look. This is a privately owned box, so we had the ability to take the face off. The power is, of course, turned off and checked to make sure there's nothing live in here. We couldn't get the the hot legs out of the lug, so we just left them in, but pulled the bus bar out so we can isolate each individual hot leg. Uh, we also pulled the neutral right out of the bus. So uh, we clip onto it. Uh, we're, we've done a locate already. We're now we're going to do the fault the diagnosis to see if we can figure out which of these lines is bad. I'll start on this one. We come over to our transmitter. We push the I button once. It adjusts volume, we push it again, it checks the ohms, it's checking, doing an ohm reading right now. It tells me that the hot leg we're hooked up to right now has a one meg ohm fault to ground. One meg ohm is pretty darn high. Gonna be you, you wouldn't find that. So let's go back to our conductor. We'll go to the other hot leg. And it looks to be settling down about 383k ohms. So that's a much low resistance to, to ground. Now, back to our panel for just one sec. We've isolated all three conductors at both ends. The reason you do that is if the hot leg burn off burns off the insulation on the, the neutral, the neutral still connected, you'll get false readings. So we've also disconnected the neutral here. Now I'm going to clip on the neutral and see what it says to see if we've got a uh, uh, bleed off at that point. On the neutral, we've got 36 K ohms, so it's also faulting to ground. So it looks as though our damage at the on the hot leg is also burned off the insulation. On the neutral, it's going to ground. So if we didn't isolate the grounds at both ends, we'd likely be just chasing grounds. That's why it's important to isolate all three conductors when you're doing this kind of fault locating. So we're going to go back to our faulted leg, clip on, now we're going to switch into fault locate mode from locate. So we'll turn on about 300k ohm. And here we are in 8k fault find. We just push the button, the, the frequency button. It says 8k fault find, putting out about 10 milliamps of current. At this point, we simply take the receiver. And you notice, by the way, our ground stake is almost 15 or 20 feet away from our connection. The reason you always separate the ground stake from the connection point is that oftentimes the damages are at the base of a device or a pole. And when that happens, if the ground stake is too close, you get one big pool of current. It doesn't help you actually find the fault. So you always separate the two of them in almost any direction. It doesn't matter. This line happens to go under this building off into that direction. But we put the ground stake out there. Fortunately, the ground is still not frozen. Uh, so we're able to get the ground stake in okay. So we're in fault locate mode. We've already done a locate. So plug in the A-frame into the receiver. As soon as you plug it in, by the way, the receiver automatically goes into fault locate mode. As soon as you turn it on, it moves from being a locator now to a fault locator. So it instantly uh, tells us we're in fault locate mode. So now what I'm going to do to prove that we're able to locate this fault to myself before we begin the, the, the undertaking is I'm going to take my A-frame over to the ground stake and I'm going to put the back leg of the A-frame, in this case the red leg, about the same distance from the ground stake that I think the cable's buried in the ground. So that we think it's about three feet deep. So I'm going to move my, my, my A-frame about three feet away from the ground return point, stick it in the ground, and up on screen I see the number 87 pops up with the arrow points away. That's an 87 dB fault, should be easy to find. And so if I put the ground, if I put the A-frame in this direction, I get the same response. Doesn't really matter where I go. If I put the ground stake closer, the number stays the same. So we're getting a good solid indication that there's a ground fault out there we're going to be able to find. So let's just pick our A-frame up, take it to the other side of the building, begin our fault locate. So I'm going to stick my A-frame in the ground. And the first thing I see is the arrow points that way, and it says 65. We had 87 back there. I got 65 pointing that way, which means the fault is ahead of us, which is good. It means it's not under the building. 
So if it says the fault is ahead of me, I'm just going to follow the path of the conductor and see where it takes me. I come out to here, stick it back in the ground. It now says 54 dB. So our numbers have dropped because we're walking away from the ground stake. And we'll expect to see our numbers at some point start to increase as we come closer to the fault. You know, you don't even have to be right on top of the conductor when you're doing fault locating. The A-frame will still walk you where the damage is, but the closer you are to the conductor, the, the more reliable it is. So the number still says 54, which is what it said back there, which means the fault, we're still, we're getting close to it, but it's not, we're not real close to it just yet. So now the number's gone to 68 from 54. So I know I'm pretty close to where this conductor is because I previously located it, but let me just say what happens. That's where the conductor is. If I step this far off the line, the A-frame still takes me to the damage. So you don't necessarily even have to be right on top of the conductor. It doesn't hurt, but all that's really important is where is the signal peeking out? It's up ahead of us. Let's keep going. Come back to here, stick it in the ground. Now I'm at 95. I was, at 80, I was at 54 back then, which means I'm getting closer to the pool of current, which is caused by the fault itself, which is good news. And now I come to here, put the A-frame in the ground, and lo and behold, the arrow, red arrow, now points me back, which means, hey, Dave, you just walked past the fault. So now I simply, I have two choices now. I can turn my A-frame around if I want to and walk back and follow, this, follow the arrows at this point. My arrow is pointing that way at 96 dB. Put it in the ground again. Still says 96 dB. That way, the green arrow is pointing this way. Stick it in the ground again. And now it says 96 dB this way. So the arrow is pointing me back, which means that the fault is between those two checkpoints, basically right here. Let me show you how we can do that. So I'll turn my A-frame around. I'll stick it in the ground. Arrow says 96 that way. I'll come to here. It says 96 that way, which means the pool of current is directly beneath us. The best way to find exactly where it is is to move it back until the A-frame changes direction. Right now it's going back. Right now it's going back. And right now it's going forward. That means that the all my references are to the center of the A-frame. So right now, the damage is in front of the center of the A-frame in this direction. So if I put my foot there and move it to here, and stick it back in, and now the arrow points back, that means the damage is now between my feet right here. So this is where we believe the damage is. So now that we believe we know where the line is and the fault is in this orientation, let's do it this way. It's called a cross here. So now I take the A-frame and I turn it across my line. And I put the A-frame in the ground and the arrow points back, 96. I come back a few inches, the arrow points back the same way. Come a few more inches, now the arrow points back a few more inches, and now it points forward. So now we found that the, the break in this orientation is right here, and in this orientation it's in the same place. So that crosshair tells us where we believe the line is. Before I dig the hole, I always do a pothole. So now what I'll do is I'll stick the A-frame in the ground. It, it points forward. It points forward. It points forward. It points forward, still pointing forward. One more time. And it keeps pointing forward. So all of that pothole brings me back to the fault being exactly right here. That's pretty well as good as it gets for finding faults on a direct buried conductor. If this was in conduit, we wouldn't have been able to find it unless the conduit was broken. We believe if we dig this thing up, we're going to find that the hot leg is damaged here, and we'll also see some damage to the insulation of the neutral as well. That's why both conductors are going to ground, we believe, at this location. That's it for now. Thanks very much.